Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the 10 to 14 days for today's bird video. Day 10 will take us to the 11th of August, so we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the set of GFS and HM ensembles. Maybe I'm trying to go to weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That'll get us more or less to the end of August. I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video release day was our 6am UK world forecast. We've also released the extended 30-day European outlook. And we've got Tony Scully's August forecast coming up for you this evening. So please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. Got a lot to uh, go through before we get on with the video. So the first thing I've got to say is I'm so very sorry about what happened on Sunday. I was planning to do a live stream. I did a live stream uh, 10 to 4 today. So I split up Gareth Lowe's Sunday Roundup this month. I just did like the... Um, see some temperature on me, so activity, etc, 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 in the video. And then I was intending to do, like, 10 to 14 day part of that, um, in the live stream, uh, at 6pm on Sunday evening, and combine it with loads of long range as well. It all went out of the window, because I started, uh, getting a migraine on Sunday afternoon, and, uh, it just completely knocked me for six. So, <laughs> I spent around, from about 4pm Sunday afternoon to 4pm, Yesterday afternoon, I think I spent something like 18, 20 hours of sleep um, in that 24 hour period. So I was absolutely <laughs> knocked out of it. Um, that's the reason uh, uh, quite late on I had to cancel the live stream, which I don't like doing, you know, because when, when, when we make plans, I like to you know, stick to them. So so I'm so sorry, you know, for anybody who, who was aware that I'd have to cancel the live stream and, and you know, turn up on the channel at, at 6 p.m. or whatnot, I expected to find me live and, and nothing was happening. So, so, so anybody who was caught out by that, I'm so incredibly sorry about that. The other thing to say is that we've also, um, thank you so much, all of you for your support as well. All of your love messages, concerns, support as ever. I've been inundated, you know, with people checking, see how I am and, and that and, and giving encouragement, uh, and whatnot on YouTube across the social media channels as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of you for your support. And as you can see, I'm a much better today. You know, I'm back on it today. I'm still being a little bit tired, but but I'm more or less back to normal today. Thank you so much, everybody. The other thing to say is that we've reached 16.5k. Uh, did that over the weekend, so thank you so much, everybody, for getting us to 16,500 subscribers. That's amazing. We're pushing on now to 16.6k. Um, so, if you could subscribe, tell friends and family to subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And the last thing I've got to say is happy birthday to Katrine. It was Katrine Bezos' 60th birthday um yes you know i was intending to give uh, katrine a birthday shout out on the live stream on sunday but of course uh that went out of window as i say and i didn't do any videos yesterday so this is the first opportunity i've got to say happy birthday to lovely katrine face so if everybody in the comments just say happy birthday to katrine it is a big one uh this year katrine's 60th birthday so congratulations katrine and uh, I hope you had a lovely, lovely birthday yesterday. I hope you're having a lovely um, post-birthday uh, day today. Uh, thank you so much, Katrina, for all the support over all of these years. Right, that's all of the announcements done. We'll crack on with the video then. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. As I say, please like, share, subscribe on the vids. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, going to start off with BCT. So we confirm that CT came out at, no, it didn't come out at 12.1, what's happening there? So we want to go back to here. Right, we confirm that the CT came out at 16.1, which was 0.2 of a degree above the 61 to 90, average. So about bang on average, really, 61 to 90, 90, around half a degree below the 91 to 20, 20 average. How that worked out? Um, this is what a Shows you up. So, um, is that essentially is that uh, maximums for July came out 20.1, which is 0.2 of a degree below average, and minima for July came out at 12.1, which was 0.5 a degree above average. So, it was for warm nights that held up 
with CET. A lot of people wondering why CET wasn't dropping more. But it was. It was because of the warm, cloudy, damp, wet nights keeping the overall temperature up. But, yes, when you're within, like, 0.2 of a degree of average, you basically had an average month when that's above or below. And as I say, if you compare that to the more recent average, which is 91 to 2020, then it's about half a degree below average. The uh, 91 to 2020 July average is 16.7. So, uh, so, so, a cool and average month for the modern average, and about average for the 61 to 1990 average. Uh, this is the first time, just to say that, uh, also unusually, uh, we find that, uh, July has come out cooler than the June before it. So, June came out at 17 degrees, of course. July comes out at 16.1. That's the first time that's happened for a very, very long time. We've actually got to come down to um, and then go up to uh, 1970 for the last time we had uh, a summer where uh, June was warmer than July. Uh, June 1970 came out at 16.4, July at 15.2. Interestingly, that summer saw August going back to 16 uh, degrees, 16.0. So possibly uh, we'll have a warmer uh, August compared to to July, but it is an unusual event. It's a rare event to get um, to get uh, June warmer than uh, than July. So so um, quite interesting what's happened there. Right, okay, let's move on to the upper air temperatures. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble. Look at Colchester today, suggested location for this part of the video. So we can see that the 30 year, the red lines are 30 year upper air temperature average for Colchester. We're starting off about average at the moment, though we are going to see the upper air temperature becoming cooler as we go through the rest of this week and into uh, the weekend and into the beginning of next week as well. Actually going quite significantly below average with those upper air temperatures for about four or five days at the end of week into weekend and to start next week. Then we've got a warming trend appearing as we go on into the second week of August. That's the Midnight Ensemble Run. This is how the uh, sixth set Ensemble Run is looking. Again, very similar, really. We're starting off about average. We find the upper air temperature getting cooler for several days because of an average for several days uh, later on this week, through weekend into early next week. And then a warming trend appearing through the uh, second week of uh, August and into the middle part of the month. There are some quite hot outliers, that one most notably so, going to plus 20 degrees at 850 HPA. Uh, and there is a cluster here that's going to between plus 10 and plus 15 Celsius at 850 HPA. We can't discount the cooler ensemble members down here. Precipitation wise, lots of rainfall to come over the uh, next week, further bouts of rain, and then possibly a drying trend as we look out through the second week of August. So, a cool, a wet first week to August, possibly a warmer, drier second week of August. Got to wait and see how far we go with that, of course. Temperature anomalies on the 1st of the 9th of August are going to be coming out below average, cool and average week to come, not just UK and Ireland, but through most parts of Europe. Precipitation anomalies from the 1st of the 9th of August coming out wetter than average. So a cooler than average and a wetter than average uh, first week of August. Not, not great, really, for anybody particularly um, planning a holiday. These are the, no one we're talking about, uh, this is Rachel Winfrey from uh, nolschool.net. A couple of days off, I've completely lost my uh, routine. Uh, this is Rachel Winfrey from, from uh, nolschool.net with low pressure in the Atlantic and weather from on its way in from off the Atlantic. That will be bringing further wet weather and windy weather too tonight and into tomorrow. Go through chart data. This is our latest UK Met Euro run. It's looking for a big night on Friday. Cool with showering northerly winds into the weekend. More low pressure comes in off the Atlantic. That will bring further bouts of rain with it. And on into the early part of next week again. Looking rather cool and showery with winds in from the northwest. So, yes, rather unsettled, rather cool, showery conditions to come. 
I can't again with wind in from north on Friday back between showers uh, with it, then low pressure, bring potentially quite a wet day on Saturday. Another uh, wash out for any, <laughs> anybody playing barbecues, I'm afraid, this weekend. Uh, cool showery conditions continue into the beginning part of uh, next week. Further low pressure drives in from off the Atlantic up to midday next Tuesday, looking unsettled, cool and showery. The GFS midnight run, again with winds coming from a northerly direction on Friday, bringing shower additions, then low pressure, brings further wet weather over the weekend into the beginning of next week. The weather remains cool and showery. Later next week, though, GFS shows a bit of a change. High pressure starting to ridge into the south, brings something a little bit drier and uh, warmer then. And by day 10, which is the 11th of August, the high pressure should be into centre to our east. With low pressure out to west, that could start to pull up some proper warmth from the south. The upper air temperatures are actually becoming very warm, plus 10 south ice firm is uh, moving northwards there with GFS midnight run. That carries on to the 12th of August as well, when it's actually quite hot in the far south and southeast corner. Finally, could we get a drier, <laughs> a drier, a warmer uh, weekend there, 12th, 13th of August? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, doesn't last all that long, though. The next weather system coming in off the Atlantic by Monday, the 14th of August. One way out now, of course, bringing showery conditions. We're back to high pressure mode by day. Uh, 17, actually, which should 17 of August back under high pressure, bringing drier and warmer weather again. So definitely more high pressure influences here from like the middle to the end of next week onwards into the middle part of August. That's GFS Midnight Run with GFS 6 set Again, we've got those cool showering northerly winds on Friday. And over the weekend, it looks unsettled with further low pressure being more wet and cool conditions. Into next week, cool and showery as well. Then uh, second half of next week starts to ridge up from higher pressure to the south. Um, so that begins to pull up some proper heat into the south. We have got a deep area of low pressure way to our north and west. Plus 15 cells ice firm getting into southern England there on Friday the 11th of August, day 10. That could get the temperature back to 30 degrees depending on sunshine amounts. Then it'll start to be pulled off some sort of thundery low there. That's, that's, that's Saturday the 12th of August. That's looking a bit thundery and volatile. And that's keeping the hottest of the air away over France. But we have got some very hot air sitting over France. We've got plus 20 Celsius ice berm into the north of France. And the plus 25 Celsius ice berm is across central and southern parts of France. So we aren't all that far away for some, from some really extreme heat there, actually, as we go into the weekend of the 12th and 13th of August. So don't totally discount the possibility that things could get very hot uh, as we approach the middle part of August. But potential is there over France and Spain, Portugal and whatnot. It's just a question of whether we can tap into that uh, potential. Beyond that, we go back to rather showery conditions again with GFS 6Z as everything starts coming in from off the Atlantic and the upper air temperatures actually become quite cool. Those hot upper air temperatures are shunted off away to our uh, east. If you enjoy the video, please do like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Web. We thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. We've hit 16.5k. We're pushing on to 16.6k now. So we thank you so very much everybody for doing this for us uh gm again with the northerly winds bring cool shower conditions on friday the weekend looks unsettled with low pressure bring more showering and cool conditions those conditions carry on into the early part of next week as well then the middle to second half of next week is high pressure taking over to our south and east we finish up at day 10 which is friday 9th of august with high pressure from east low pressure to the west and check out the upper air temperature proper hot air surging up from the south plus 15 celsius ice mountains cleared northern scotland that would definitely get the temperature back to 30 degrees maybe even more than that down in the south we might get hot again everybody uh later next week ecm has the wind in from the north on friday that brings very cool showery conditions no weekend into oh next week it tends to look cool and showery as well then higher pressure begins to take over through days 9 10 just turning things a little bit drier but not especially warm actually nowhere near as hot as like the gm that we just looked at 
Well, actually, quite cool for your prayer temperatures under that bridge of high pressure overheat. It's across the south, uh, you know, to our south, into the bed in southern Europe. So if that high pressure was to slip eastwards and the wind was turning to the south, southeast, maybe we could tap into something hotter for the middle of August. This is, this is the precipitation forecast based on Met ECM run from Tometro.com. Showers and or longer spells of rain to come. Heavy showers and uh, spells of rain. And uh, that carries on really until around days 8, 9, 10. And then the higher pressure starts to kill off those showers and we turn drier at that point. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble Day 4, Day 10. Gets us to the 11th of August from the Icelandic Met Office. 10 members of the ECM Ensemble with high pressure issue to ourselves. Should be a lot of dry and uh, relatively warm weather with that. Nine with low pressure over Scandinavia, high pressure over France. Again, turning drier in the south, perhaps a bit unsettled in the north. Another nine with high pressure to our east, over to the east, catch up, draw up wind, southerly direction. Uh, nine or another nine has us under high pressure, so it mostly dry and warm. Uh, eight with high pressure over France, that will bring up wind from south west, could still be doing it showery in the north, driving the south. And then six with high pressure. Pretty much over the country, includes the operational road. Most of those options are going back to some sort of higher pressure influence, actually, at day 10. So, signs of a change for the second week of August here. And in uh, two week time, these are the options that we've got. Get 16th of August, 23 members of the ECM on Psalms with low pressure dominated weather, mostly unsettled and uh, showery back. 15 with high pressure over France and away to our north. Probably some lower pressure coming through here. Weekly low pressure. And uh, 13 with high pressure dominating over and just to the north. Catch up, be mostly dry and bring the wind in from an easterly direction. So quite uncertain by the time we get through to uh, two weeks out. But definitely more of, more of a high pressure influence for day 10 anyway with those options. CFS beats you finally, beats a 500 millibar height and on to break down to week periods. The first week period takes from 1st to 7th of August. This next week we'll have low pressure over and to the east of country, mostly cool and showery conditions to come. Week 2 will be the 8th to the 14th of August. Again, low pressure centred over to the east of country. Wind still coming in from a cool north northwesterly direction. Week 3 <laughs> is going to be the 15th. 21st of August, low pressure just to the west of the UK and Ireland, still rather cool and showery with that. And then week four will be the 22nd, 28th of August with high pressure building to our south, lower pressures away to the northwest. Jet stream is being pushed away to the northwest as well. That's turning drier and warmer from the south there into the last full week of August. Though it is four weeks away, it's a long way out, so it's the most unreliable part of all of that. But eventually, CFS does get us back to something quite substantially drier and warmer by the end of August. We shall see. Time will tell. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Show sure everybody to do that. Drop a comment. Let us know. What you think about this all of our videos, don't get to your friends about gas well, but thank you so much everybody for uh, doing that. Right, as I say we're up 16.5k, we're pushing on 16.6k. Tell friends and family to subscribe and let's get to 16,666 subscribers, which is number I'm waiting for um as soon as we can. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. 17k the ultimate target, of course. Right, I'll just tell you what's coming up. Tomorrow we're gonna have 6 a.m. UK Bow forecast, it'll be at C USA forecast, and we will be live streaming um tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. We'll live stream our 10 to 14 day. -er. And we'll combine some long range with that. I'll show you some of the long range I was going to show you on Sunday's live stream, particularly focused on the Copernicus suite of uh, models on a month by month basis. So, uh, long range, short range, medium range is all to come in tomorrow's live stream at 6 pm. And that will be going ahead, even if I'm going to get up off my deathbed. That live stream, <laughs> not literally, but you get what I mean. That live stream will be going ahead tomorrow at 6 pm. You enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. And for this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Don't get Terry Scully's August forecast coming up. Um, probably around 6, 7 this evening. So uh, check that out if you uh, can a little bit later on. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.